Today is Friday the 13th, and it's probably about maybe going on 3 in the morning. I'm getting ready to, I don't have dialysis today because I have to isolate after having the COVID test done yesterday, the brain swirl. Anyway, I am, look at Boots, she is zonked out. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm getting ready to start filming the my process for tamales because this Thanksgiving um, I decided to do like an indigenous American kind of Thanksgiving because that's what it was originally according to history. So, um, you know, they shared their recipes and stuff. The pilgrims and the Indians. So, I thought um, I'm going to do the traditional turkey dinner, which, you know, I have videos on that. Um, I think they they migrated over from Facebook I hope so. I have to check my library to see. If not, I'll have to start doing, I'll have to redo those, show you how I season my turkey and all that. But anyway, I usually do a big meal for Thanksgiving, all the trims, all the fixings. But this year, I'm going to do a small menu on the American and a small menu on the indigenous. Now the thing is, is that it may end up looking like more indigenous than pilgrimish because of the different types of indigenous cultures. Because I want to do some like pasteles and some honor the Puerto Rican culture and their foods around the holidays and also the Mexicans. So for that, I was thinking um, tamales is a famous one and um, uh, making a taco casserole, uh, taco tortilla casserole, I guess. And I have a video on that. That's my taco bake. Um, and what else was, oh, and menudo, Mexican style. The only thing I don't have is the volcanic rock. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to find that <laughs> in any store, uh, especially in Kentucky. Kentucky is very limited. Um, it's getting better with um, Spanish uh, products, but uh, because it's not very common, um, it's costly. It's a little pricey out this way, you know, for those stores who do... Um, stock or have a Hispanic, what they call Hispanic aisle, um, or like, I'd rather say Latino aisle, but you know, like there are stores like the Cuban store, I like to go there to get, you know, all my fresh stuff for sofrito, and I have a video on how to make that, and um, so yeah, but again, you know, it's pretty pricey because they have to import all that stuff, and it's just very rare in Kentucky to, you know, those products are. So not everything is found here in Kentucky. So I do my best, you know, and sometimes I have to improvise, unfortunately. But it is what it is, and you work with what you have, right? Adapt to improvise and overcome. Is that how it is? I can't remember. I think that's what it is. But anyway, I'm going to do the the tamale part right today. And I was thinking of making tamales with, of course, I got a flank steak. Boiling that with some beef bacon pieces, but it's not brined yet. It's just the, the fat and the meat together. The belly, the navel. Um... And I'm going to make some with uh, green chilies and spinach and cream cheese, you know, and then with a nice little uh, 
strip of pimento and uh, oh, pepperoncini uh, slices in the middle. So I'm going to do that, one with spinach and cheese, and then I'm going to do one with some with chicken. All right, so that's my plan, and I'm going to videotape today. I'll probably videotape the, the making of the, um, I don't want to make the masa early. I want to make the masa that day so it's fresh. But as far as, even though I can freeze it, but I don't want to do that. But as far as the meat and the uh, guajillos, which are the peppers, the uh, dried peppers, um, I'm going to do the sauce and the meat today, videotape that, and then maybe the day before, uh, because I'll have a lot to do the day of, the day before I'll go ahead and fix all the tamales in, uh, probably freeze them and then cook them the, the day of. That's the plan. It may change. You know me, I'm creative cooking in Ani's kitchen, so I get very creative. You know, I change my mind is what I'm saying sometimes. You know, right in mid-play, I'll, I'll detour from my original plan. But that's what's fun about getting creative in the kitchen. That's what it's all about. You know, just get creative. Go with the flow. Go with what your inspirations. You know, just go with your inspirations. But anyway, so here I go. Follow me. All right, here I am. I'm going to wash my hands for just a second. Here's the flank steak, okay, that I'm going to cut up into little bits. And just to add some fat to that for flavor, here is the beef uh, belly. So I'm going to wash my hands. And get some bleach on here. Give me just a second. Get some bleach on this rag so I can go ahead and use it to wipe the counter from all this dripping drippings. And my rag. Okay. Put it up there. Yes. And. All right. So first things first. This is the part that, you see that, that you can make, if you brine it, you can make beef bacon out of. And I was going to do that with that piece of meat, but I thought best to use it for flavor in with the flank steak for the tamales. So I'm sacrificing my beef bacon, y'all. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get this rolling. I'm gonna cut this like one would cut. This is like the equivalent of salt pork without the salt. 
you know, the flavor. Yeah, see that? That's what, see that? That's what you would use to make beef bacon strips like that. But cut the long way. And all that fat, once I season all that fat, it's going to add some good flavor to the meat or the tomatoes. Okay. I think I'll save the rest actually to brine. chicken fat from an actual bird that I boiled and I froze it so that I can use today with these meats. Uh, yesterday I made some sweet and sour barbecue uh, Pinchos, which is uh, shish kebabs. Oh my God, you want to talk about delicious. I made six of them, and it must have had like eight pieces of chunky chicken in each. Chicken breast, chunky, 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 I'm talking about. And hamster, there was only two left. I ate one. One filled me up. That's how many, I mean, eight pieces of chicken. That's something. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of chicken. But uh, Hops ate the rest, except for two. I was like, wow. And that was on top of the main course. That was kind of like a side, you know? Only because I had taken the chicken out, and uh, I had it for another recipe I wanted to try, and then I changed my mind. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I went ahead and made the shish kebabs and the pinchos. And boy, he <laughs> he tore that up, Puffster did. They were good. They were really, really good. I'll have to, uh, I actually wrote the recipe, the marinade that I used. And uh, the only thing I didn't put on there was after they were grilling and um, the barbecue sauce, I used a honey barbecue sauce to, to brush upon it right towards the end. That's the only thing I didn't write, but it's on my Facebook, Creative Cooking and Ani's Kitchen page. If you go look at that, you'll see all, all the ingredients I used for the marinade for that. Chicken. Shish kebab, or pinchos as we call them in uh, Puerto Rico. But they were absolutely delicious. Absolutely out of this world delicious. Y'all have to make you some. See what I'm talking about. So go to my Creative Cooking and Ani's Kitchen Facebook page and... Yeah, check it out and try it. Above all, try it. Trust you. I mean, trust me, you can't go wrong with that recipe unless you don't like sweet and sour stuff. You know, if you're not one for that flavor, that's fine. Other than that, I promise you'll love it. Okay. Okay. Here we go. 
off. And all that blood. Rinse this out and throw it in the trash. out of this too. Okay. After uh, I cut this, I will rinse this out um, with some a little bit of vinegar and lime juice. Always cut against the grain. Remember what you're trying to do is cut little chunks because, you know, tamales only just so big. So you don't want big bold pieces and uh, that'll break through your tamale masa. So this is how I'm doing. I'm going to show you how small I'm cutting the pieces for the uh, steak tamales that I'm making. Okay. Want them about half an inch pieces cube pieces just like that hey can you all see that that's what we want I love this uh, what's your knife a survival knife Let's do everything like Boto. Boto. <laughs> I will say that. Boto. Okay. Cutting against the grain, always. Otherwise, you steak will fall apart on you even though it wouldn't really matter in this case because even if it's shredded it'd probably work even better on the tamales you know but not as you cook it because it'll fall apart on you what they do corned beef out of they, um, cure it that's the flank inch pieces that's what you want all right so I'm gonna finish here and get my pot of water I'll bring you back when I have the uh, why well, you use well let me see let me show you what I have
chili guajillos. I have this big old bag, and this is all I'm using. I think this is enough. I'm not mixing it with the other one. The other one is too hot. I don't really like spicy hot foods, as you all know, but I can do a little hint of it, just not a whole lot of it. So I'll bring you back. Let me finish this up real quick. All right, here I go. I'm rinsing it out, getting all the excess blood out of there from cold water. Okay. Now I'm going to pour in a little bit of vinegar, about a quarter cup or so, and some lime juice. Okay, just a little dab of do you. I'm gonna clean this up. Just mix it up in there. Okay, drain it out. Okay, then we're going to rinse it out one more time and that'll be it. Now it almost looks like pork. See? <laughs> Uh, but it's not. Oh yeah, and you can definitely make tamales out of whatever you want to make them out of. Stuff them with whatever. You want to stuff them with rice and beef or rice and pork or rice and, or sausage, whatever. You can do it with whatever you want. Okay, so that's it for that. Wash my hands. And uh, most hot water, most people are the recipe. Usually, what they do is they uh, boil the meat, you know, with onion or whole onion and uh, here and garlic and stuff like that. Well, and then they sear their meat after it's cooked, you know, before they put the sauce in it. Well, I like to do it the other way. I like to sear the meat, season the meat a little bit with our bubble, and sear it first. Let it rest for a few minutes, and then cook it in the fresh chicken stock that I have, you know? That's how I like to do it. But to each his own. So let me put my lime juice and vinegar away and I'll bring you back and we'll go ahead and sear this meat. Okay, so like I said, we're going to season the meat first. Now the chicken, the shredded, the chicken I think I'm going to shred when I get it, um, it's on order, so I should get it uh, by tonight, and I'll do the same. So here's the adobo, and I'm going to just generously sprinkle that on there for seasoning. And that is all I'm going to season it with. So let me get a glove because I'm already bleached my hands clean. And I don't want to keep bleaching my hands clean. It's dry enough as it is from my hands being in water and soap and water all the time. You know what I mean? Okay, so 
may need a little bit more bubble. There's a lot of meat in here. In the meantime, I'm going to turn the burner on to eight just to get the skillet hot. And we're going to put in about a tablespoon of olive oil in there. I'll use whatever oil you want. I like cooking with olive oil. All right, so a little bit more adobo. Actually, I may put in, instead of adobo, I think I'm going to put in a packet of sasso. For some color. This is the Puerto Rican touch. So I'm going to add one of these to this. Okay. One hand it. <laughs> All right. That's done. You definitely need a glove for this. This will stay in your hands. I mean, it'll come off. Uh, Eventually. Now it's starting to look more Puerto Rican ish. <laughs> so, to the olive oil, we're going to add some atope oil. Okay. Done with the glove, and I have some here. I have some in the decanter, but I'm going to use this up. Just about a nice tablespoon. Wipe the jar. Okay. And going to go ahead and start searing the meat. After we sear it, we're going to let it rest. And you want to leave it on at 8 because you're searing. You can also do this on the boiler in your oven. Just put this so the meat on a tray, oven safe tray, a sheet tray, or a nice casserole tray. Spread it out and just hit the broiler for, you know, a few minutes on each side. And there you have it. It's a lot of meat. Meat's gonna go right back in there. All right, so we're gonna let that sear. I'm actually gonna put it on high. It's got a good amount of fat in there with it. Okay. Now. I'm going to add some smoked paprika so that it'll sear into the meat. This is creative cooking, you all. I don't want to scratch my pan with this metal. I better get the other one. How you ruin your pants. 
So now I want that to sear. And I'll bring it back once we need, it starts to evaporate and we have to toss it. Okay, well this is drying up very nicely. Evaporating. taste the salt content because you remember seasonings they have salt and that's actually pretty good just like it is I'm not going to add any salt Wow, that's <laughs> absolutely perfect. Now, I got some fresh basil here. I just picked it from my plant, okay, which I'm going to soak. Well, let me just rinse now because I grow this indoors. ahead and pluck these leaves. I got some basil leaves here and about six of them because some of them are just, you know, they break. All right, so there's my basil. Oh God, that smells so good. And I have Half a large onion, a whole clove, uh, a whole head of garlic cloves. These are already peeled. And then I have, as you can see, I'm soaking my cilantro. And the reason why you soak them in water is to get any little mites or bugs that might be on the leaves and the bunches. You always want to do that. Okay. All right. This, this sounds like it's starting to sear. This is. I did that a good call. Here for another couple of minutes. And then we'll start going in what we need. to lower, turn this off actually, and let it kind of just simmer down and uh, soak up, all, let it rest and soak up all its uh, juices. Let's 
think I'm going to put in the rest of this onion. Also, might as well. Straightening out my shelf in the refrigerator. Hush to move everything onto the wrong shelf. Okay. I'm going to. Oh, I'm defrosting the chicken broth, which I'm getting ready to throw in there. That's exactly what we want to see. Seared meat. going to put in our first jar of chicken stock. It's having a little problem coming out. Let me defrost it some more. We can go ahead and throw in our cilantro. Get this bowl out of here. Our meat, I mean our meat, our onion. Our rinsed out basil, fresh basil leaves. dry bay leaves and our garlic, a head of garlic, cloves. Okay. So now we just need Put in the chicken stock, and that shall be that. And we'll let the meat uh, slow cook. I put this back to about a four, and we'll let it cook for about an hour. We'll come back and check for tenderness. And if it needs more time, we'll give it more time. So, waiting on the chicken stock, I'll bring you back. Okay, I think our chicken stock is ready. We're going to pour that in there. Yeah, it's still some part frozen. There we go. 
There's one jar. Now, if you want to add beef stock instead, you can't by all means. And then we're going to add water to this. Again, if you boil a chicken, cook a chicken, and all that fat you get uh, from a chicken, just always save it. Put it in a jar or a container, freezer safe container, and, and just throw it in your freezer. You never know. It's great on dressing for Thanksgiving, all kinds of stuff. We're going to put it in our guajillo sauce. So I'm going to be pureed in the sauce. But this is what's going to give it flavor. So let me go ahead and add some water while I wait for the other jar of Chicken stock, homemade, or I should say fresh. because it will reduce down as it cooks. Okay. Bleach, bleach my rag and I'll bring it back as soon as the other jar is ready to pour. Okay, here's the other jar. This little piece of meat floating on top of the onion like it's a lily pad. And to the boca. jar of chicken stock. Okay. So now what we're going to do is let this cook. And I don't want it on a high boil or fast boil. I want it on a slow simmer or low simmer. Okay. That's 
that's what I'm wearing it. So I'm just gonna put a screen over it. A splatter screen. Just to catch anything that may bubble. And I'll bring you all back as soon as it starts to cook down. Let me put the timer on. One hour. We'll come back and we'll see how it's doing in about an hour, okay? But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead over here and start boiling these guajillos so we can start. We got to cut them all and seed them, take out the seeds and stuff, and then put them to boil. That's next. Okay, y'all. I figure I'd do this one sitting down <laughs> so uh let me show you how i'm going to clean the guajillos the chile guajillos to do is open the guadillo up and clear it out of all its seeds and that vein So you got to clean them thoroughly. The seeds is what brings the heat. We all know that. So if you like the heat, you can leave them in there. But I wouldn't leave too many in there just for the... And I'm getting the vein out, as you can see. See that? Cutting the vein away. to be clean. There's a clean leaf. See? That's what you want. And you gotta do that to all of these in here. So, tamales is definitely a food made out of love. <laughs> because it does take work. It really does. And, uh, But it's enjoyable. I mean, nurturing. Here's the vein, if you all can see it. See that vein right there? I'm gonna take that out. Stuck in 
show the seeds are out. For me, I have to do that. So I'm going to finish up here, and then I'll take you, um, I'll bring you back when we're ready to do the next step. Okay, well, here are my guajillas all cleaned out. Those are all the seeds. Now, I'm not throwing this away. I'm going to dig a hole out in the backyard and just dump that whole thing in there. And if it grows, it grows. But I'm also, uh, I also got some seeds put up. And what I'm doing is vegetables that I buy, I harvest the seeds. Because you never know. You know, with the world the way it's going right now, you never know. So what I did was I did half a bag of the guajillas because I only need it for the beef. The chicken is going to be... Um, Probably a butamel but sauce, a white sauce, and um, the oh, spinach with cream cheese bun and jalapeno will probably be a green sauce. And that I have to buy a jar of. Okay, so I only need, I only need a half a bag for the amount of meat that I'm cooking for the beef. Uh, steak tacos. I mean, not tacos. Tamales. Alright, so we're going to head on over to the stove. The uh, timer did go off, so I'm going to go check the steak. So come on with me. Alright, here we go. Let's see what this is doing. Oh, this is doing just fine. Perfect. Look at that nice sauce. That's gonna go good in the masa and in the chili. Okay. Let me see how the meat is, how tender it is. seems that I have lost my bread, but then the was over here. Mm. Oh! That meat is extremely tender. Let me turn that off. Actually, I'm going to switch it over. this up before I slide this on over and let that cool off all right I guess I don't need this So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill a pot with water halfway. Yeah, 
to mess in with those. Well, I need a hot. Get that beaker off my hands, my fingers. Okay. We're going to throw all these into the pot. Alright. And push them down. I'm going to boil these so they hydrate and get very, very soft. And we'll end up straining it and uh, putting it in some jars, I guess. You've got a container for your Kool-Aid over there? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this container to put the sauce in and then store it in the freezer until it's time to assemble the tamales. Remember, I'm just pre-cooking everything. Okay, so we're going to let this boil and I'll bring you back once it's done. Okay, let me... Uh, Tell you, to the guajillas, we are going to add some seasoning. So we're going to add some cumin, about a tablespoon. Turmeric, about a teaspoon. Some dry basil, a teaspoon, some salt, I'm using Himalayan, about a tablespoon, okay. Garlic and onion powder mix, about a tablespoon. And oregano, about a tablespoon. All right, and all these uh, vegetables from the steak. That's going to go in here too. possible Don't worry if you don't get it all, that's fine. Because the meat is fine, you know, to have some flavor in it. You do want to take out your bay leaves. I'm going to let it sit in the meat until I'm ready to use the meat. It'll be easier to handle when it's cold. All right, 
Looks like we got all the big chunks. Going up. If I could take out now. It looks like I got most of the garage out. Okay. So that is go. To this chili sauce, we're going to add some, some frito, which I didn't add to the meat, but that's okay because it was already flavored really well. And we're going to add some mojo. Okay, squirt of that. Some sofrito, a couple of tablespoons, okay, Bit of sugar. Kind of tone now some of that heat. Little angel thing. <laughs> Needs more salt. Ooh, that spicy hot. Need 
use some adobo too. Okay, another tablespoon of salt. Thing in there, we fill this back up. I'm using Himalayan pink salt. I am gonna put some adobo. We're going to strain this meat. Strain this. Okay, here are the other leaves, bay leaves. Get them all together. Garlic is very good for you. Okay. Make sure I got all the bay leaves. away. We have served that purpose. And now we just gonna let that boil. Let me see what they look like. They're about ready. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. And I'm going to lower the heat to a four. And that is that. I'll bring you back. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. Now, what I did was I took about two cups of the broth from the meat. Okay. And I put it in this jar so that to preserve it for the masa. 
Okay, I'll mix that into the masa. Now, this is done. So what I'm gonna do, I turned off the heat. What I'm going to do is let it cool off and then I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna get a bigger bowl and put it all in there with the rest of the masa and I'm gonna freeze it. I'm not going to puree it just yet, okay? Cause I want it to just let it sit in its flavors and absorb it as much as possible. So let me get it bigger. Oh. cool off. Let me see if I can't. Because we want the liquid from this too. We want to incorporate all of this, puree all of this, and then mix it into the meat. I'm not mixing any into the masa because I, I don't want the masa hot. Okay. Just the meat. So yeah, remember, I'm not a spicy girl. I'm not a spice girl. <laughs> okay, that's not me. I can withstand a little heat, but not a lot. And this right here, these peppers, even though they're the sweeter of the hot peppers, it's still hot. So, just why I put sugar. Okay. We remove all this, the liquid will cool down a lot faster. If you separate them. What's that rule less in the pot when it's hot? in there we can put this and this is cooled down now okay so I just gotta put that liquid in here and we're done all right so let me show you what we've got. So far, we've got the chilies. Got the chili water. We 
got the reserve. And we got the meat. I mean, to you up and show you the meat. So that is everything for now. The only thing I'm going to do is pour that uh, chili pepper liquid in with the guajillos, chili guajillos, and freeze everything. That's it. So until um, the day that I'm ready to bring it all together and puree everything and do the masa. That's it for now. Y'all, God bless. Give me a like, a thumbs up. Pull that notification. I mean, sorry, the subscribe button. And hit that notification bell. Ding, ding. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a recipe. And don't miss out because this is not complete yet. I want you to stick with me through the entire process. And if you break these this process down as I have broken it down uh, before the day of you wanting to serve these or having company or a holiday, then the work is easier. It's easier for you on that day and you won't wear yourself out. Okay, doing it bit by bit. Again, I'm going to freeze all three of these things. Uh, the sweet um, guajillo the sauce that um, we boil the guajillos in. Okay, that's all gonna be combined, so that's one. The broth from the meat for the masa, and then the meat itself. So three things are going in the freezer. And then I'll bring you back when we're getting ready to make the masa and assemble. Oh, and I wanted to show you. I have, I bought the pot for the tamales, the steamer. So, as you can see, it has the tray. And you see that? That's the water line and where the tray hooks up and stops. And then you stack all your tamales on top of there yep so i went ahead and invested in a good pot the right pot for the tamales so it better be good <laughs> i'm sure they're gonna turn out wonderful i mean really you can't mess up a tamale can you well the masa is the tricky part because you've got to get that masa just hydrated enough not too wet not and definitely not too dry so, but anyway, until the next one, God bless y'all. Thanks for joining me. Stick with me on this one um, until we complete it. And then um, hopefully you can make your own and do the process step by step, you know, break it up. And that way it's easier to get it done. And um, hopefully you'll make it and you'll make some tamales like this and enjoy. And I do stressed again i'm making three different kinds i'm making the chicken the beef steak and the spinach and cream cheese which i've already got the mixture and it's in the freezer already so i had that done when i made some uh spinach quiche pies so yeah it's in the freezer it's already done it's a lot of it so i'll probably just only use half all right so anyway until the next one god bless you all take care of yourselves and one another bye